Ah, yes. George and Samantha, what a lovely couple. Love is in the stitches, some say. Being together is all they ever needed. But then, one day, a wind came from nowhere. Whoosh! The strong gust swept Samantha off to an unknown place, away from George. She was gone. George was heartbroken. Crying for his beloved, he heard a voice from above. The time has come to prove your love, George. Who are you? George asked. Where's Samantha? This is the beginning of your story, George, the voice said. You must find a way to complete it. Suddenly, George was sucked away. George's quest to find Samantha had brought him to a very strange place. Where am I? What's going on? He asked aloud to no one because no one else was there. George was alone. He quickly realized that his weight was important in this new place. That was surprising. Almost as surprising as the floating letters he saw. How is this possible? What are they doing here? He wondered. This place was definitely weird. George noticed a tightly wound ball of blue thread hanging over his head. It reminded him of his childhood for some yarn reason. He reached up to get a closer look and bang! Suddenly, he was blue and bigger. But how? His big blue self had the urge to stretch. Yes, stretch way out and boom! Then, just as suddenly, he was red again and staring directly at a copy of himself. What is going on? How is there another red version of me? Have I been cloned? The second red George moved along with him, which gave George an idea. Perhaps he could find a way to use this clone. If this is a clone, does that mean we're spun from the same genetic thread? George wondered. That would mean it is him, but also not, but... Well, also is, but... Yeah, it was a complicated matter. Maybe, just maybe, it was the same George. But how could he be in two places at the same time? Hmm. Could this be quantum reality? George wondered. He had some knowledge of quantum physics, although he wasn't sure how. What he did know for certain was that he had to keep looking for Samantha. That's it! These clones he kept running into were actually helping him through the puzzles. Not only were they assisting him in his search for Samantha, but they also helped him collect letters. Talk about a two for one. Hmm, George wondered as he stared at a stitching image of himself. Am I really so short and stubby? Regardless of these soft, plushy truths, George realized he and the clones made a grand team. He was glad to have them, well, himself, along for the quest. As he ventured deeper into this strange realm, George noticed that things around him were changing as if they were coming alive. Spinning spikes, towering trampolines, terrifying traps. It was a mad world. And all these buttons. Was it really safe to simply go up and press all these buttons? None of this makes any sense! George shouted. George wondered where all the clones were going. They passed through the bottle caps like he did, but they never appeared with him on the other side. At least, not in the same state. Am I in charge of saving them just because they're my clones? 
George pondered. I mean, we may all be stitches, but I'm here for one reason and one reason only. To save Samantha. It worried George that his clones, or him, or them, or well, whoever was who, were disappearing off into the same place Samantha was. Maybe they weren't really helping him after all. This worried him even more. What if one of these nincompoops decides to impersonate me and run off with Samantha? He thought. The real world could be dangerous, but this one was a nightmare. Not only was George dodging sores and sliding under prickly combs, but these clones were teleporting to some hidden place, wooing away his beloved. Who knows how many swindlers surrounded Samantha, attempting to win her heart. Even if I find Samantha, how will I be able to stand out from the rest of them? We all look alike. <laughs>